Yeah, so really, what we're talking about tonight is accessibility. And accessibility is something that's very important to me. I hope it's important to you, and that's why you're here. Uh, but it's something that's usually misunderstood. And so just by putting that word up in front of you, it probably conjured up a vision in your mind about what accessibility is, right? And that vision is usually of a blind person using a screen reader. And so a lot of people separate web users into two categories. And that's Joe Normal Guy, and then people who use screen readers. And those are the only two groups of people that exist in the world. Uh, and that's wrong. And it's unfortunate that people think about accessibility in that way because we're missing out on a lot of power that you can give to people. So there's actually a few different categories uh, of issues that people have that force them to use computers in a little bit different ways. Right? So there are visual issues, obviously. Uh, there are auditory issues. And that's becoming more important as uh, online video is becoming more prevalent. There are motor issues. Uh, and then there are also cognitive issues. So we have all kinds of people who are trying to use computers to enrich their lives. And the web is a great way to do that. Right? As long as you're able to get to a computer, you can do almost anything. You can do your banking. You can do your shopping. You can call your mom. There's almost nothing that you can't do as long as you can get onto a computer. And all of these people are using computers, but they might not be able to use your website. And so it helps to think about the different ways that people use computers and therefore the web. So when we're talking about visual issues, uh, there are, of course, blind people who use screen readers and sometimes braille readers uh, in order to use computers. And so there's no need for a monitor there, and there's no need for a mouse. It's a screen reader and a braille reader and maybe some other input devices. There are also people with low vision. So they can see, but just not that well. And so maybe they use an, a screen magnifier to make things on the screen bigger, which means in turn that they can't see as much of the screen. Right? It's a little bit different experience. Uh, and there's also things like color blindness, right, where you just can't distinguish between different types of colors. And for those people, contrast is very important in web design. Right? Because if you have two colors that are roughly the same contrast but are different, and somebody who's colorblind tries to use the site, they can't tell the difference. So auditory. So once again, we have the extreme of being deaf. Uh, and they're going to use monitors, keyboards, mouses, mice, mouses, whatever the plural is, mises, all works. Um, but for videos, subtitles become very important. Right? Transcripts become very important. Those are additional things that are needed in order to provide that experience. There's also low hearing. And so maybe not completely deaf, but have some trouble hearing. And so you may need other things uh, in the way of subtitles and transcripts and stuff like that. Uh, there's a whole category of motor issues. So there's people who have limited fine motor control. So you're not actually able to do things like sign your name. And therefore, using something like a mouse is very difficult. And so maybe you would use a monitor and a keyboard instead. And there are those people who have only gross motor control. So literally, only very large movements can be done. And those people might use a monitor in something called the single switch, which is just a big button, one single button, that can be used to control an entire computer. Uh, and then there are people who have pain or some sort of paralysis or RSI, or repetitive stress injuries. And they need to use other means to use the computer to adapt to the issues that they have. And then there's also cognitive issues, right, which is just the way that your brain works. 
And there are all kinds of different deficits that you may have. Uh, and that means that your interfaces shouldn't be incredibly confusing. And there are a ton of web interfaces that are incredibly confusing, uh, even if you don't have any cognitive issues. And so when you think about all of these different types of people and all of the different ways that they are able to use the computer, it's not that they're not able to use the computer. They can all use the computer. But can they use the web? And so when we talk about accessibility, part of the problem that we have is that we talk about them. We talk about those people, the blind people, the deaf people, those people. I've had people, uh, product managers, come and say to me after I complained about an accessibility issue, well, but did those people really do that? Or did those people, them, over there, did those people do that? Well, those people are not our target audience. Those people aren't the people we intend to use our web app. Right? Really? Those people aren't the people you want to use your web app. If they were sitting in front of you, would you say the same thing? Probably not. But it's a problem of perspective. As long as you think of them, it's easy to say, well, We'll think about them later. They don't really matter right now. They're not our target audience. But when you're faced with somebody who actually has an issue, it's a lot harder to do that. It's a lot harder to distance yourself. And so I'm not going to talk about them today. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's me. Uh, so I have an issue going on right now. Uh, which is RSI, repetitive stress injury. And that's not carpal tunnel syndrome that I have, which a lot of people think RSI, carpal tunnel syndrome is the same thing. And it's not. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a very specific thing. And it basically affects your hands and these three fingers, your thumb, your first finger, and your middle finger. You'll get tingling, pain, stuff like that because of compression in your wrist. And a lot of times, as computer people, we hear about carpal tunnel syndrome, and we get any little tingling in our hand, we're like, <gasps> carpal tunnel. Oh my god, I know, what it's carpal tunnel. Like, I'm screwed. It's over, right? And um, I did the same thing, except I don't have carpal tunnel. Um, what I have is something a little bit stranger, which is still RSI. Um, which is a problem with my neck that's causing pain to radiate down my arms into my elbows and also causing tingling up and down my arms. And there's no technical term up there for it because there's no technical term for it. It's just an injury, and it's caused by using the computer and having poor posture, by not sitting properly. Uh, and so what I discovered was that I was in pain a lot when I was using the computer. And whatever hand I was using my mouse, I was having more pain in that arm than I was in the other one. And so I would switch back and forth. I would switch the mouse over to the left. I would switch the mouse back over to the right. And I would do that whenever one arm got unbearable and switch back to the other arm. Uh, and after a while, I thought to myself, Wow, that's really stupid. Like, you're doing something that you know is going to hurt you, and you're hurting yourself doing it, and then you're saying, oh, but that arm doesn't hurt. Why don't we do it with that arm for a while and make that arm hurt? And then just go back and forth. And finally, one day, I decided that I was just too dumb for words, uh, and that I would get rid of the mouse altogether. And so I literally unplugged the mouse. I didn't literally throw it away. It's e-waste. You can't do that. But I unplugged the mouse, and I said, damn it, I'm going to figure out how to use this computer without the mouse. Uh, and I did what any normal person, I think, would do in that situation. Uh, and I freaked out. 
Google it later, it'll be really funny. So when you're used to using a computer in a certain, yeah, everybody's trying to figure out what is this reference? Google it. It's a great song. Um, what's that? <laughs> no harm. Um, it's really natural when you've been doing something for some way for decades, and then you change that to freak out a little bit and just say, I don't know how to do this. And I went through that the first week, every single frustrating thing that I did on that computer, from like opening and closing windows, switching windows, trying to use the sites that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, getting more and more frustrated because I was so used to using my mouse and getting to exactly what I wanted. But eventually, I figured it out. And that's the key, right? is that if you stick with something long enough, you're going to get it. Like If you switch from using your mouse on the right side to the left side, it feels horrible for the first week or two weeks. And then you adjust and you get used to it. Because it's really just what your body is used to more than anything else. And so after a week, I found that I was actually pretty proficient at using the computer without a mouse at all. And then I stopped and thought, wow, this is a great experience to know how to use a computer in a completely different way. And so I started learning about all of these keyboard shortcuts, which are fantastic. They let you get your work done so much faster.